just ask that the Lord just take his shield of protection on her because, you know, horrible things have been happening. She's 86 years old. Mm -hmm. It right. shouldn't be. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sister Heath. We'll certainly uh, uh, pray for her. Is there anyone else? Yes, yeah, this is Jackson and Mary County. Same head as I shared with the church that was today and Easter night. Yeah. Thank you, Sister. Is there anyone else? Pray for my wife. She's uh, in Montgomery with her painful. Okay. All right. Brother Myers, I'm sorry. Uncle, would you pray for Antoine and hope they're traveling back from Nashville to Maryland? He had to pick her up for a summer. So pray for their travel soon. They're going to leave after church this morning. Okay. Brother Mitchell is taking notes on all of the prayers. Is there anyone else? <clears throat> I don't see anyone. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have our song leader to come forward this morning. Our next election will be hymn number 390. 390. <clears throat> Have a selection. Let us together sing. Glory, hallelujah. I shall not be moved. Anchor in Jehovah. I shall not be moved just like a tree. That's planted by the water. I shall not be moved.
Good morning, church. Good morning. The reading today is taken from Matthew 13, chapter, verse 1 through 9, and also Matthew chapter 13, 18 to 23. Starting with the first verse. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places for they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun immediately sprang up because they had, I'm sorry, six verse. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns and thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who hears, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatch away what was sown in his heart. This here, who received seed by the wayside, but he who received the seed on stony places, this here, he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecutions arise, because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he receives seed among the thorns. Here is he who hears the word and cares of his word. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on good ground, here is he who hears the word and understands it. Who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Those are reading from Matthew 13, 1 through 9, and Matthew 18 through 20. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Lord. Thank you. Uh, let us pray. The eternal and great God of heaven, we bow this morning to acknowledging your greatness, uh, realizing that you are God, and besides you, there is no God. Amen. We bow this morning as thanking you for all the many blessings that you so richly showered upon us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning and giving us the health and strength to come together to share in another worship service, and we Pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless all of us. We pray a special blessing upon all of those who are gathered here. We, we pray for the church in general, Heavenly Father. We know that uh, there are so many who are not able to be here because of sickness. And we know that perhaps there are some who are not here because of a lack of desire. Yet. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you have each of us to have a greater desire to come yeah. together and be involved in the worship service. And, Realizing, Heavenly Father, it is a small thing to do when we look at what you have done for us. Amen. Know that you have demonstrated your love toward us by sending your son Jesus into the world to die for, for all of us while we were yet sinners. Yeah. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for that great sacrifice. And we pray, Heavenly Father, you help every man, every, every man, woman, boy, and girl to understand uh, the sacrifice that's been made for us. And we yeah. Come, Heavenly Father, just uh, asking your blessing upon those of this congregation in particular. We know that we have several of this congregation has been out for some time. We 
pray specifically this morning for Sister Coleman, who's uh, indicated that she's having headaches, and we know that you're able to uh, to get rid of a headache. And, and we just ask that you would intervene and, and allow her to be pain free. We also pray for Brother Kenneth Dance Moore, who's uh, not feeling well. We pray for Brother Byer's brother, who's in a nursing home and not doing well. We pray that you bless him. We know that you're able to lift him up and we just ask that you to intervene and just make things better for him as, as well as my own sibling. I have a sister in a nursing home and pray that you would bless her as well as her brother who's having health issues. We pray that you would uh, bless him as well. Amen. And also my daughter Trini's home not feeling well. We pray that you would bless her. Amen. Help her to have better, better health in the future. Amen. We also pray for uh, Sister Hooks and the Waffles, Sister Townsend, Sister Brewsters, and all those who might have missed someone, but we know that uh, you know who they are, and you know that uh, if they're a member of this congregation, we pray for the sick everywhere, regardless of where they are. But we should always have the best interest of all being at heart. And we pray also for Brother Pete, uh, who's not able to be here this morning, pray that you bless him. <coughs> I also pray for Miss uh, Hattie Whitaker. We pray that you would uh, uh, bless her. We don't know all of the circumstances surrounding her situation, but we know that you do know. And we Amen. pray, Heavenly Father, you would bless her, keep her safe, and pray that all be well with her yes. and her family. Amen. Pray also for Sister Stamps, who's away. Pray that you would be with her while she's away and allow her to return safely. Yeah. We also pray, pray for Antoine, who's traveling and pray that you bless him and those who are with him allow them to ride home safely and pray all will be well with them Amen. pray also for sister Francis who could admit it that she had seen and Amen. made a confession we pray that yes. you bless her Amen. help her heavenly father to uh, overcome help her to uh, not commit the same error again yes. and we pray that you help us all to be uh, more spiritual minded, help us to gain strength in the areas where we're weak. We yeah. just need your help, Father, in yeah. helping us on a daily basis. And pray, Heavenly Father, that we will always allow your Son uh, to re be reflected in our lives on a daily basis. And we ask forgiveness of sin, Father, for we know that there are times when we fail to do things that we ought to do and we do yeah. things that we shouldn't do. So. Yeah. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with us all the days of our lives. Forgive us. And when uh, life here should be no more, we pray that a home in heaven will await us. Yes. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Lamentations be uh, two set two seventy some Lamentations. Some of those sermons didn't in fact. So when you're able, body, come on down and worship God in spirit and in truth. Remember, as he said earlier, when two or three are gathered together in his name, Christ is in the midst. Amen. So Jesus is in the midst of us right now. I don't know which few he chose, but he in one of them. Amen. Amen. And he's here today to be with us. So all we can do, I shouldn't say all we can do, but the least we can do 
is be in the presence of royalty, King of kings, Lord of lords. And our Savior and Judge, when all is said and done. Amen. I want to go in and steal his thunder by any form or fashion, but he did a great job with that. And I thank both of our elders for continuing to shepherd this flock and the great job that they have done. I really have to give credit where credit is due as they steered us through in over two years of this pandemic. And we're still here. Amen, y'all. Still able to keep God in the center of our focus spiritually. Um, as we're supposed to. So thank you both brothers for your tireless service behind the scenes. But also I thank all our brothers and sisters here for everything that you do. You have to understand that if God don't, I mean, if man don't thank you, God is already appreciative of everything you do. And sees everything that you do. And it's going to follow you to the judgment day as well. Thank you for your labors behind the scenes. I thank God for my wife and her uh, birthday yesterday, I almost gave away her age. That's why I kind of stopped myself because I wasn't authorized to give out her age. So I let her give her age to you. But I can give you a hint with the same age. Amen. Amen. So if you know me, you know her. So I didn't technically say it, did I? But you could probably figure that out. I'm 59 days per senior. Amen. <laughs> So thank God. I'm, I'm tired of folks saying you robbed a cradle when I'm only 59 days older than her. I guess she just weathered a storm of aging better than I do. Is that all right, y'all? Which is, guess that's just the way it is here today. But nonetheless, uh, we do thank you again. Even though we start off humorous, we know we're very serious about Christ here, aren't we? Yeah. But see, we know how to walk that line. We know how to enjoy each other. Be able to uh, fellowship with each other and laugh with each other. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen, y'all. As I look at this day, I look at this earthly life as practice for heaven. Because we're going to be doing this forever anyway together. So we might as well get to enjoy each other now. Because we're going to do it throughout eternity as time goes on. If the good Lord sees fit, of course. And of course, if you're visiting us, I just want to echo, just want to repeat what our elders have said, if you're visiting us, we will thank you for coming and that you are certainly our honored guest. Whether you're here or whether you're overseas, whether you're on our broadcast, you are honored uh, by being here today by us. And our hearts are always open and warm unto you as a symbol of hospitality for you being here. And I also want to let you know you always have an open invitation to worship and fellowship with us once again. Man. want to get to it, to the message here today. I thank you all, brothers, who have participated in the service. You've done a wonderful job. I want to definitely acknowledge uh, Brother Gary Large, who has re uh, read a long passage of scripture for us. I'm just going to take a portion of it. But as you know, we're to properly do hermeneutics, that is, interpret the Bible. You want to read the whole passage before you start interpreting anything. Amen. Because you can go south very quickly if you don't know the whole thought of God. So he has given us the entire blueprint of God's thoughts. Now we're just going to take a portion of it. So we, our blueprint came from Matthew 13, verse 1 to verse 9, and verse 18 to 23. Now I'm going to go right to verse 18 to 23. And I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version. And please note that everything quoted today will be out of New King James Version, otherwise, unless otherwise indicated. If you're with me, go to verse number 18 and somebody say amen. We're going to read it again, 18 to 23. All right, Lord of Heaven says, and he's interpreting what's called the parable of the seed and sower. This is one of the most important parables because when you know this parable, you understand the rest of the mysteries of the Bible, also known as parables. In other words, once you get the symbols of this one, you apply it to the rest of the symbols in the New Testament, then you understand and unlock the mysteries the code that he is that Jesus is speaking in uh, throughout the Bible. All right, so verse 18 to 23. Let me go ahead and get on with it here. Jesus says, Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now 22 is the key verse. So I want you to really take this in. This is going to be the launch pad for the entire message here today. Verse 22 says, 
Now, when he receives, now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Again, that's the rereading of Matthew chapter 13, verse 18 to verse number 23. And based on verse number 22, just a three-word topic here today, being the great distraction. The great distraction. You're going to find out that all of us can be easily caught up in the great distraction. Now, unfortunately, we can be distracted from our spiritual duties to Christ very easily and very quickly in this age of technology in which we all live in today. We, of course, have this parable of the seed and the sower as our lead verses today. And as such, we see that one of the grounds mentioned, meaning one of the groups of people that become Christians, is what he's really talking about, is the word that fell upon a ground full of thorns. Now, if you want a visual, what Jesus is really saying is saying that the word, which is the seed, symbolically in the parable of the seed and sower, it fell on a certain type of heart. In other words, a certain type of mind received it. Now, this mind at first was doing well because immediately it accepted the gospel. What he is really talking about is himself. He's talking about salvation in Christ Jesus. He's saying that this person was one who heard the word of God, but he had thorn bushes in his heart. And these thorn bushes took the seed and they arrived. You see, if you know anything about agriculture, I'm not a farmer, but I've done a little bit of some things as far as the green thumb. Now, when things grow and they're uh, dwarfed out or they're covered up, I should say, from light and in air and from water, things get smothered out by a plant that's more dominant the niche. Now, what this is saying is that the thorn bushes in this person's heart, which means the ground symbolically, is that they were so much of a distraction that they drowned out, they burned out, if you will, they killed the word of God that they initially accepted in their hearts. Right. In other words, what they're saying is, is that the cares of the world, the many distractions that go on in our personal lives, mm -hmm. I take it where it's supposed to be? Mm -hmm. They became higher priority than their Christianity. Right. Higher priority than their love for Christ. Higher priority than them coming to worship. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just going to take it where it is. Right. Higher priority over everything spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's like this, the, the, the words that most of our brothers say here all the time when we pray about them. We pray about those that are not concerned mm -hmm. about their soul's salvation. Amen. Now, you may have misinterpreted and thought they were talking about the world. They're actually talking about church members yeah. that have fallen by the wayside Amen. or have backslidden is a better way that we like to say it in our slang church term. Oh, yeah, you got slang in the church. Yeah. Ain't no backslidden in the Bible. We just say it. Amen, y'all. Yeah. But you get the concept right. from the symbolism that's being used here on in the word of Almighty God for our understanding. So obviously then, you don't want to be the third type of hearer in the parable of the seed and sower. You don't want to be those that is distracted by your personal life over your duties to Christ. Yeah. So he says there's two things that hold this person back. This is a Christian that has the cares of this world, his personal life above Christ, and the deceitfulness of riches. God is saying those are two different types of thorn bushes that drown out the seed, the plants of the word of God in their hearts. Amen. Okay? So they're more concerned about being worldly mm -hmm. than spiritual. Yeah. And eventually what? If you stay worldly long enough, the world is going to take over your heart. Right. And eventually you're going to fall away from Christ, fall away from the church. All of these things which we studied last time, if y'all listening, means what? The same thing. Oh, amen, somebody. We ain't got time to reprove that, but I'm going to show you. But you understand where we're coming from. Falling away from the church is the same thing as falling away from Christ. Amen. Now, let's look at these things in detail. Now, remember, this is the master teacher. This is the king of kings, Lord of lords. This is the savior 
that's teaching us that there's going to be certain types of Christians that fall away. Now, he says there's one that is going to fall away because of the distraction of the deceitfulness of riches. In other words, he's saying riches are just like Satan. They're deceptive. They make you think that everything is all right when money can't buy you happiness. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. See, riches can be like a drug. A drug causes the body to release a chemical in the brain called dopamine. And that chemical is what causes pleasure. And see, when you study just the basic fundamentals of, of drug addiction, you'll understand it very easily. In other words, Satan gives you initially when you take that first hit or something. Can I talk about ends here, y'all? Yeah. Huh? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you ain't from the hood like I am. Amen. When they take that first hit, that's the highest they'll ever get on drugs. Because what's going to happen is, is that dopamine is going to release as much dopamine as possible in the brain. Mm -hmm. And see, they're going to want to try to duplicate that same very, very, very high pleasure that they'll never be able to duplicate again. Mm -hmm. However, the drug user, because I'm going to call him a drug user right now. Because yeah. he's going to become an addict in a minute. Yeah. It's different. Mm -hmm. All right, that drug user does not understand how the brain works. Mm -hmm. That is, he goes around and he continues to try to chase that same high that he got the first time and never realizes he'll never get it. Right. So that's why he's always with the drug pusher, the drug dealer, right. every 20 minutes, right. trying to duplicate that same high that he'll never get again. Right. So in other words, you're chasing that which is not possible, and that's what addiction is, chasing that which is not possible. Right. And so what happens is you chase it and chase it and chase it and chase it until you kill yourself right. in the process. That's what addiction is. It's chasing something you'll never achieve again. Oh, amen. amen. That's cruel. Cool. That's cruel. Cool. And Satan knows exactly how that works. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. So that's when that person that what I began with calling a drug user turns to a drug addict, and he wastes away his life chasing this awful slave master called a drug. Yeah. Now, folks, if you understand that, understand that chasing money can do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, I didn't lose you just yet. I was, I was listening. I paused for a reason. Yeah. I'm going to show you why. Notice the word of God tells us that it's deceitful. Yeah. Money tells us that it's the key to end all our woes. Yeah. Money tells us that it's the solution. To all our problems. Money tells you that your troubles will vanish when your account goes to a certain level or goal. This is why money deceives all the time through get rich quick schemes and Ponzi schemes that actually steal our wealth instead of build upon it. This is why people pose as charities, but really are wolves in sheep clothing trying to take advantage of us. And if you ever notice, it's not always the poor that invest, it's the rich folk. Right. That got everything anyway, don't even need it, and they end up being in the poor house. Right. Because they get kind out of all their money. Because of what? The love of money in their hearts. This is why people take the lives of others. I'm talking about robberies and burglaries for a quick addition to their bank accounts. This is why people catfish, which is opposed to someone's love interest, only to steal the hard-earned financial savings of lonely people. That are out there. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Bobby Caldwell said it right. What do you do for love? Amen, somebody. Amen. You try everything, but you won't give up. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm back like you don't know where I'm coming from here. Again, family, yes, money is deceitful. It will have you doing all types of evil you do not know how to get and when you don't know how to control your lust for it. This is why also gamblers cannot quench. See, remember how the mind works. The dopamine, that chemical release, when winning one time, will allow you to continue to lose 500 times more over. Because you think you're going to get that one high once again from winning again. When you have lost 10 times more than what you ever won. Oh, amen. In your life, folks. Remember the Bible says, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 10, as I have quoted, but let me quote the whole thing out of New King James Version. God's word says, for the love of money is what, church? The root of all evil. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness 
and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And it said, hey, sorrow. Mm -hmm. It said what? Many Amen. sorrows. As you can see, to pierce yourself through with many sorrows means that those who spend their life chasing riches have many regrets. They regret they lost their wives because they never spent no time with them. Well, they regret their children being cold and ruthless with them because they were never there. Mm -hmm. They have raised them. Yeah. They regret chasing riches because they know in their heart they have thrown Jesus to the side mm -hmm. in order to become rich. They regret the years have gone by they have not been to worship service. Mm -hmm. They regret that they never have any more time for the things of God such as Bible study, prayer, and fellowship with others. You see, if they have a soft enough heart, I'm sure hoping I'm talking to a prodigal child that's doing this right now. That's able to say as he was in the pig pen and come to himself, I had it better in my father's house. Amen. See, that's the good thing about God. Just because you're out there don't mean you can't come back. Amen. If you're willing amen. to come back or oh, amen somebody. Because I know that my God is still the addiction breaker. Amen. 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 But you got to come forward and help him. You got to come forward and do like the alcoholics do. Yes, I'm an alcoholic. You got to admit the problem that you have. Or God cannot help you. Amen. Huh? With that problem. Amen, somebody. Amen. See, again, I'm hoping that people that hear this and have these issues, they have a soft enough heart, they begin to understand and learn to balance secular pursuits so that they are part of life, but do not dominate their lives to neglect the family or the church. Amen. Yes, we gotta go get our money. Oh man, amen, somebody. Like these young folks say, we got to go get our bag every day. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But you can't allow that to become the focus of your life. Amen. See, I don't know about you, but I still serve the God that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Added Amen. unto you. If I keep Christ first, I'm going to have what I need anyway. Amen, somebody. Amen. I don't have to be greedy about it because he, he owns everything on a thousand hills. Amen, y'all. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Amen, now. Now, moving forward, keep what Paul has said in mind in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 and verse number 13. It says, not that I speak in regard to me, for I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. Oh, amen, for somebody. Amen. See, folks, you know, when it came about a year ago when I lost about 70% of my income, y'all didn't know about that because I didn't tell you about it. Did you see me moping about it? Because why? I've learned to be able, like Paul said, to live high and live low. Amen, Amen y'all. I know how to eat filet, and I know how to eat ramen noodle. Amen. Amen. Either way it go. As long as my belly's full, hey, I am content about it. See, Philippians, let me go back to the scripture. Y'all don't get me too excited. I'm going to be here another half an hour. You do that now. Amen. No, I'm just joking. Now. Philippians 4, verse 11 to 13 says, not that I speak in regard to need, for I've learned whatever state I am to be what, church? To be content. I know how to be a base that means to live low. And I know how to abound, which means to live high. Everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to what? Suffer need. Here's my strength right here. Here's your strength. I can do all things through church. Christ, who strengthens me. Oh, I'm so glad that God, Christ allowed me to flex when I'm poor. Amen. I'm so glad God allowed me to lift 300 pounds uh, spiritually even when I'm rich. Amen. Because I can do all things, what, church? Through Christ that strengthens who? I wanted y'all to say this because he's talking to you. And he's talking to you personally. He's talking to you as an individual right here, right now. But you got to be just like the prophet Isaiah. Here am I. Send me. Send me on this journey of faith, Lord. And I will not disappoint you at all. So going back to Philippians 4, verse 11, verse number 13. This is showing us that we must come to a point of being content with what God has given us so that we can truly focus on spiritual things. You got to start asking yourself, and please put yourself in the question, not your neighbor. Because I'm challenging myself with this as well. We gotta come to a point in our lives, we gotta ask ourselves, and this is just examples. Is the house we have big enough already? Well, we have to start asking ourselves, if blessed for transportation, how many cars do I really need? Well, we have to start asking ourselves, how much clothing, jewelry, gadgets, etc., do I need? And am I overdoing it? 
And so, folks, it's time to be content. Amen. You see, we don't have to have everything in the world. Amen. You see, one of my, my favorite topics back in, in college was economics. The very first lesson that they teach you is greed is good. So I already know when I open that textbook, I'm talking to Satan. Oh, amen, somebody. Y'all don't get where I'm coming from. I understand it. I'm glad it glad because it helps me understand the American economy, etc. How to brace for it, how to invest in certain things, etc. I get it. But it's founded on the plan, uh, founded on the foundation that greed is good. Huh? And so that's why you have nations go against nations in war, because why? They want what the other nation has. Huh? Because why? Greed is good. To them, you know, it's just like Russia bombing places right now, bombing hospitals, all that kind of nonsense. Right. Why? Because what? Greed. Right. It's good. They want the land. They want the resources. They want everything they can get out of Ukraine. That's the point of war. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. People don't care when money is out there. They just see greed. They don't care nothing about you in the process, y'all. So we don't, again, we don't have to have everything. In the world. Remember at the end of the day, Matthew 6, verse number 20, where God says, I treasure her where? It's in heaven. It's going to supersede anything and all things we have down here. You know, I'm just like Job said, naked I came into the world. How else, church? And naked shall I return. He also said, what? Blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, Job is saying, I'm going to praise him no matter what. It's the same thing Paul is saying. I know how to live high, and I know how to live low. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. They all mean yeah, the same thing. Remember, God is going to give us all we need, again, based on the promise of Matthew 6, 33. Let me repeat it one more time. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. He will also give us some of the things we want to enjoy in this world, too. Verse 56, verse number 17, and give us all things to enjoy. So you're going to have a little bit more than just what you need. However, you must keep this under control. Amen. See, folks, quit calling everything that you get in life a blessing. Everything you get in life is not a blessing. Amen. You may think it is, right. but it's not. Amen, somebody. Amen. See, I, I used to be a uh, sister back in, at the Metro Central Congregation in uh, Detroit. She said, I always talk about she loved her struggle buddy. In other words, we used to call it back in the day when I was young, a hoop. In other words, a raggedy car. Did I say it the way it is? A car that got up and go when it wanted to go, not when you wanted to go. One of them type of cars. You see, and the thing is, sometimes you gotta appreciate that struggle buddy. Huh? Because you go down to the dealership and get a brand new car, and it's a limit. Amen. And your struggle buddy actually was better than your new car. Huh? You see, sometimes we put ourselves in predicaments we don't need to be in. Amen, somebody. Let's just tell the truth. How many of you, you ain't got to answer verbally, got debt you're going to have from 30 years ago? Yeah. Still weighing on you yeah. to this very day. Stuff you ain't need to have. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Still paying for them platforms from the 1970s. <laughs> you ain't more. In 30 years. Still paying for them yeah. to this very day. You know, we put ourselves in some bad predicaments because why? We get what? Greedy. Mm -hmm. We want more than we should have because we're never satisfied. So remember, things are never a blessing if they take you away from God. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. That means it's a temptation, not a blessing. Can you see the difference? A temptation takes you away from God. A blessing brings you, brings you to him. Oh, amen, somebody. Maybe that's why some folks ain't got transportation because they'll miss worship service every Sunday. Amen. They might need to call somebody for a ride. Because otherwise, they won't take themselves there. Y'all don't get where I'm coming from. Because why? They can't handle the material thing. Huh? Oh, y'all don't get where I'm coming from now. You see, remember, James chapter 1, verse 13 tells us that all good and perfect gifts cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow turn of. Actually, verse 17. So for something to be classified as a blessing, it has to meet two conditions. It's got to be good, and it's got to be what? Perfect for you. 
Oh, amen, somebody. See, sometimes, sisters, y'all think tall, dark, and handsome is good and perfect for you. He may be good, good looking, but imperfect for you. Because why? He's taking you away from God. You do more worship than him than you will God. Huh? All you got to do is snap, snap, his, snap his fingers, and you'll miss worship service for him. So who are you what, worshiping? Y'all acting funny now. Y'all doing this? I'm just telling you. It, what it is? So the, the, whatever you put as a priority in your life is your idol. It's what you're worshiping. Huh? Truth is the truth. Y'all might be too hard on you. You tell me. I'll stop stepping on your toes. Remember, a blessing's got to be what? Good and perfect for you. Uh huh. Not good and perfect for the next person, but good and perfect for you. Because why? That blessing is designed for you. Mm -hmm. See the difference. You know, when you go in for a job interview, can I take it there? Because I do it all the time. What is my schedule? Is my schedule going to be on Sundays? Then that ain't the job God wanted you to have. Huh? That would say what? Pulling you away. Because he knows you're going to be what? More dedicated to that job. Huh? Then you're going to be in worship. When all you have to do is wait more, one more week, he's going to probably give you a job that pays twice as much and free you up. Oh, you don't get it. But you were too impatient to wait on him to bless you with the job, so you took Satan instead. Oh, y'all don't get where I'm coming from. I got I got about five percent amens. That's all right. I don't preach it anyway. Amen. See, folks, again, if it's not perfect, good and perfect for your spiritual life, then it did not come from God. Don't call every material thing a blessing because truth is told, that's not always the case. Amen. You better do some praying and analyzing and fasting if you have to. Before you take certain and do certain decisions in your life, that's really going to rip you away from Christ yeah. instead of to him. Yeah. Lastly and shortly come to a close. We as American Christians are accustomed to being online a lot as adults. If it's not the internet, it's social media. If it's not social media, it's television. If it's not television, it's a smartphone. If it's not a smartphone, it's a laptop. If it's not a laptop, it's a video game. We must realize that these things are not evil in and of themselves. But they can be used for evil purposes. Don't let them dominate your day to the point that they cut out Bible study, worship, prayer, prayer, and fellowship with other Christians. And so the devil is using these things for evil. So unplug from these things to plug into your life, into Christ. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. And God will please. You know, I, I think about that. You know, why my main sport probably was basketball. Why he made me 5'8", 135 pounds coming to high school. He knew if I played football, I'd be on the gridiron right now. Amen. So he didn't give me the body for football. Amen. He gave me the craziness. I'll hit you and knock myself out, but that ain't going to work. <laughs> Not when you run up against 450 pounds. Amen on the defensive line. That ain't going to work. But you get where I'm coming from. There are certain things, certain doors God is going to open that's going to bring you to him. And certain ones he's going to close so that you can what? Be close to him. The only thing we got to do is stop pulling on that door now. Amen. And sometimes we'll open that door and go through it on our own. Without God's consent. Without his permission. And that door closes and then you bang it on it for God, get me out of here. I'm just so glad you do. Amen. But don't take that chance. Remember, evaluate things the right way. If it takes you from God, it didn't come from him. Amen. 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 See it before it happens. Ask questions about everything. Get information. Be informed before you make decisions. Because you make the rash ones. Satan got you in his grasp. Yeah. Before you even know it. May God bless you. We'll let it go right there in transition thoughts. Remember, avoid the great distraction and let God be your great attraction. Amen. You scared. Yeah. You're child of God and you walk the sword. You allowed your life to be distracted by things that we know are ungodly. It's time to come back to God by repentance, confession, and prayer. You know God's grace and mercy is still there. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here right now. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to receive any of the things that are being talked about right here, right now. 
We know that comes out of Acts, Acts 8, verse 22, and 1 John 1, 7, verse number 10. That if you're willing to repent, meaning change, confess your fault to God and ask to forgive you, he will forgive you right then and there. You'll be back on the salvation road. If you're not a child of God, though, don't let this golden opportunity pass you by. You have to understand the world itself is the greatest distraction from you being saved. Mm -hmm. The world itself is going to tell you, hey, wait until next week. You got time. You don't know that. Mm -hmm. God said our life is like a vapor. It's here one minute and gone the next. We don't know what tomorrow is going to have for us if we exist at all tomorrow. You have to understand that God wants you to give your life to Christ before it's too late, before you close your eyes for the last time. So this is urgent information. Just like you see on CNN, Fox News, or whoever you patronize on the news, you'll see across the screen breaking news. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's urgent. It's something you need to listen to right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Well, that news is uh, called the plan of salvation. It's the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's the good news that Jesus Christ suffered and died and rose again for you. That you may have a chance at eternal life. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but everybody that's honest in here, we all say we are dressed up but messed up. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about spiritually. Mm -hmm. That none of us in here, including myself, have the ability to go and be able to stand at the judgment day and impress God mm -hmm. with our righteousness. Amen. 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 We can approach Jesus' throne of grace and mercy with our chest out mm -hmm. as if we're somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but even on that judgment day, as, as good as I feel, even though I felt like I lived right, so I'm going to go in there with my head down, Lord. Huh? My chest came back in. Oh, well, amen, y'all. Mm -hmm. On my knees if I have to. Mm -hmm. To show God, just like that man that was in the temple, that publican. And beat on my chest if I have to. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about frustration with myself. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Yeah. A sinner. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand that God has already diagnosed me in you. Mm -hmm. He's told us in Romans 3, verse 23, and Romans 6, verse 23. All have sinned and fallen short. What, church? Of the glory of God. Glory of God means the perfection that is God. None of us have been perfect enough to make it into heaven. But he said and gave us a celebration point in Romans 6 verse 23 that he says the wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through who? Christ Amen. Jesus. Why? Jesus told us. He said greater love have no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. He died for us. Like the gospel of John, uh, John that is apostle John told us. He is the propitiation for our sins. Yeah. That means he's the atonement. Even to break that down even further, his death is what gives us peace with God. Yeah. Romans 5, verse 9, and verse number 10. Because Revelation 1, verse number 5, his blood washes away our sins. In other words, his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary is the penalty paid for everything I have ever done that is offensive to God. His blood washes away every lie I've ever told. I'm talking about you and me. Yes, sir. Look at you. Don't just look at me. Every time I've done something wrong that's disappointing God, that blood, that blood, that blood was spilled to pay the price of the penalty of my and your sins yes, for those who name Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their life. That's the first part of the plan of salvation. You've heard the word of God, that Jesus Christ suffered, died, and rose again, that you may have a chance at eternal life. You must respond by faith. When you look at John chapter 3, verse number 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have what, church? Everlasting life. Remember, spiritually, God uses just two terms, life or death. Death is hell. I'm talking about literally going into eternal punishment. Life is heaven. And Christ dies so you can have eternal life, which means heaven as your home. When all is said and done. But you got to respond in faith. you got to believe that God accepts his death on the cross of Calvary as the penalty paid for your sins. That makes him literally the son of God. That makes him your Lord and Savior. When you say you believe that he's the son of God, that's what you're saying. That he is my Lord and Savior. That he directly came from God. Marched down here on earth right to the cross of Calvary. Died there voluntarily to save you and I. But rose again on that third day. For victory to be sung by all of us because he's coming back to save us and take us on to the heavenly glory when all is said and done. The third part of your response is not just mental, not just that you believe, but you are putting in action what you believe. God calls that repentance. 
Repentance means that you are living now under the righteous leadership of Christ and leaving a simple lifestyle alone. That's all uh, repentance is. To turn from evil to do what's good. Luke 13, 3 and verse 5. The fourth part of the plan of salvation is what you must do with your mouth. You must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus tells us the benefit of that Matthew, in, in, in the book of Matthew. He says, he that believe, uh, he that confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. That's Matthew 10, 32 and 33. But he says, those that deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. He's saying, on the judgment day, if you take ownership of me down here on earth, when it's time for you at the judgment day, I'm going to take uh, ownership of you. As a saved child of God on that day to come. You'll see everybody that's ever been converted in the Bible. I ain't talking about what man said because man can't get you into heaven no matter what. You got to do what God says. They all confessed Christ and they all were baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. If you ever notice the pattern, just study Acts chapter number 8 about salvation. That man, an Ethiopian uh, eunuch man, that man from the Cushite kingdom in the original Hebrew, that means he was a man that was from uh, lower Egypt and northern Sudan today. In other words, he was an African brother just like most of us here in today. That man, he was worshiping with the Jews. That's why he was in Jerusalem. He would have been considered what's called a Jewish proselyte. You had a lot of people that converted from other areas of the world to the Jewish faith. So he had come from worship and he was riding his chariot to go back to the Cushite kingdom known as Ethiopia in the Bible. And the Bible says that God spoke to an evangelist, a preacher named Philip. And Philip answered the call and he met that man at his chariot. The Bible says that he got in the chariot and that man was already seeking God before Philip got there. Yeah. How do I know? Because of the text he was reading. He was reading Isaiah chapter number 53. Yeah. The one that talks about he was bruised for our iniquity. His life was taken from the earth because of us, as I paraphrase it here today. Yeah. And that man seeking God wanted to know what the word was saying. He said, who is this man? Who is the scripture that he is talking about? Yeah. And the Bible says that God given, that God sent evangelists, because everybody that preaches ain't sent now, but this one was. Yeah, Philip taught him about Jesus. Yeah, right. And being yeah. taught about Jesus, just like you being taught here today, the man came to a conclusion that I want to be saved. That's why he made the statement, here is water. What does hinder me from being baptized? If you sit in our audience, you ought to be asking that same question. Yes, but I'm going to show you where it is. Yes, right there. Yes, Here is water. What is hindering you from being baptized? Yes, huh? You just like that Ethiopian eunuch in that chariot right now. You staring at it. You see, if you notice something in the scripture, Philip didn't say, let's go find some water. Yes, if you look at the scripture, that Kushak man, that Ethiopian eunuch, spotted himself. Yeah. And he spotted an opportunity. Oh, All right, y'all don't get it. Yeah. He's the one yeah. that was pursuing Christ. Yeah. He's the one that had to have been taught correctly yeah. of the effectiveness of baptism, the requirement of baptism. The necessity of baptism, the essentiality of baptism yeah. for our salvation. Otherwise, he would have stopped there and said, look, here is what. Mm -hmm. What does hinder me to be baptized? Here's my opportunity. What's stopping me? The man was anxious. I had a brother I don't want to call his name. But we baptized him. And I was so shocked by his response. And I've been preaching over 20 years. And basically, he didn't say it this way. But he was like, hurry up. To me. Do you know what? I got out my clothes as quick as I could to put on them baptism clothes and get him in the water. What if I to slow him down? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a help, not a hindrance to God's work. Oh, I met somebody. I've only seen that one time in my preaching career. But it was the same thing 
that the Ethiopian eunuch did. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Oh. The other thing that I saw, it, it was in Africa, in Nigeria, that I haven't seen in America at, at all yet. I saw that when I was blessed to preach what I'm preaching right here, here, here right now to you, that when, I, when, the, when we called them to be baptized, a whole family, yeah. five of them, I think, if I'm not mistaken, a father, a mother, and all the kids, all got up and wanted to be baptized right there yeah. and there. You see, when you lead them right, you're leading them to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? When your heart is open, people ain't got to keep telling you be baptized, be baptized, be baptized. You're going to come to them and say, here it is, here's water. Mm -hmm. right. That's what does he to me? Man. To be baptized. I'm going to get out of your way in just a second here. Well, you probably ask me, well, why would the man be so excited? Because obviously he was taught right about what baptism does. Yeah. It's not the water. It's the commandment of God that you're fulfilling. Yeah. That results in the uh, uh, blessing of salvation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see nothing in the water. No, it's just water. That came from Jackson. That's just city water. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the power is in what God is going to do after you come out of the water. Yeah. The power is your obedience leading to salvation. That's where the power actually is. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because look at the scripture. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. The Bible says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, all these folks are talking about they didn't be trying to talk in tongues. They never got wet. They ain't doing nothing but lying. They ain't doing nothing but battle. Because the Bible says what? And I'm not talking about preaching in tongues. I'm talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says what? Repent, number one. Be baptized, number two. These are steps, right? Mm -hmm. Remission of sins, which means forgiveness. Number three, then what? Gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. huh? Who indwells you to help you along this Christian journey. I ain't got time to deal with that here today. But you cannot have the Holy Ghost without repentance. Mm -hmm. You cannot have the Holy Ghost without baptism. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I know all about it. I was in a Pentecostal church for a minute. I've been there. I've danced around the church. I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. Almost knocked myself out. Amen. Somebody had to catch me because I'm about to hit the wall. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I've been there. Done that. What's faking? Amen. <laughs> Pentecostal church, man. <laughs> but we didn't get it to the drum hit right. <laughs> we didn't get it. Do you start hearing that? Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, my God. That way, everybody stand up. And, and, and young Pentecostal brothers would stand up. I used to use my feet on the dance floor. Now I give it to the Lord. Young yeah. God, I need to quit shit. <laughs> But I think things happen for a reason. I had to see all this stuff. You know, because I was, I was sitting back there. I had enough Bible in me to like, when the Bible school teaching was teaching, I'm like, where'd that come from? Yeah. That ain't what that word says. Yeah. You, can only, you can have a second grade education and know he ain't telling the truth. Yeah. Amen. So I, my, my conscience was just killing me. Yeah. Y'all ain't got it. Yeah. If you ain't never been in a denomination, you don't know what I'm talking about. That's it. Your, your conscience sit there and just destroy you because you're like, what in the world? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what in the world are we doing? This don't make no sense. Man. Who in the world came up with this doctrine? It's clearly false by even the scripture they use to try to prove their points. Mm -hmm. Huh? I'm going to leave that alone. Mm -hmm. You got to repent. Man. You got to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts 1, 2, verse number 16 also builds on that same thought about the importance of baptism, the essentiality of baptism. Uh, it says, Why tarry thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's how you call on him when you come out of that water. You're calling on Jesus to save you. Amen. Amen. Because why? That's when God says what? Washing away your sin. That's when the blood 
is applied to your account in all your spiritual misdemeanors and felonies called sins are purged at that point. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21, if I paraphrase it, baptism does save us. Not to put away the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God. And if you can't get it from Mark 16, verse number 16, you can't get it at all. You just don't want it. Amen. Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized yeah. shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. The sensuality of baptism is consistently proven by the scriptures. Don't think about what TV evangelists say. They can't do nothing but buy a plane, but they can't get you in heaven. Amen. Truth is the truth. They can't do nothing for you spiritually. Don't listen to them. Listen to what the word of God says. Word of God says, again, just quickly summarize it for you to understand how to become a Christian. Is what? Hear the word of God concerning Jesus Christ being the Son of God and the Lord and Savior. Believe it, considering, uh, uh, believe it in faith, I should say. Repent of your sins, being to turn to Christ in righteous behavior and leave sinful lifestyle alone. Uh, confess Christ as the Son of God with your mouth and be baptized, forgive us your sins, and the salvation of your soul. That's when you become a Christian. That's when you come out of that water, just going back to Acts chapter 9 with the Ethiopian eunuch. If you saw his response, he got out of that water grave of baptism doing what? Rejoicing! Because obviously then, once you come out of that water, your conscience is clear. There's nothing that God's going to hold against you anymore. Huh? You understand that all your sins have been washed away, meaning forgiven. You have been added to the church, also known as the family of God, as God's child. God has signed your adoption papers, if you will. As his child at that point. Galatians 3 verse 27. And other passages of scripture show us that we become children of God. Once we are baptized. And of course you're saved if you stay faithful unto death. Now remember the rest of the journey though. That uh, portion of the scriptures that I gave you. That's the beginning of your journey. That's how to become a Christian. But you must remain one. In order to be saved. That's what Revelation 2 verse number 10 actually is talking about. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Jesus said, faithful means what? Stay committed. Keep believing, obeying to the end. And heaven's going to be your home. See, think about it this way. I used to run track, and I wasn't no good at that. Amen. I don't know why my, my coach had the bright idea, because I was no longer this is running, but he's going to put me on the 400 meter. Just, just grab me for sight. I know I would get in there. Wait, I ain't worked on this thing. I'm used to running 100 to 200. I'm used to, the longest I've ever done was a half a track. Now I got to do a whole track. <laughs> Didn't know what I was doing at all. Beat everybody for three quarters of the race. And came in dead last. <laughs> at the end. Amen. Around that last corner, last straightaway. Killing everybody. Man, probably beat everybody to hear the quit. Man, man. Had a big lead. Come in dead last. <laughs> and one of my teammates, you know, you're supposed to be supportive of your teammates. She was like, you know, when I came across the line, just barely making it, about to fall out. Ooh, you're so me slow. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I'm racing, man. But the, the whole point of that is not just humor. Mm -hmm. Is that don't come three quarters of the race. That's what I mean. yeah. And fall out. Yeah. You got to run that last straightaway just like you ran the other three quarters of the race. Yeah. Meaning what? As they taught us some track. Run through the tape. Yes, sir. In other words, don't just run to the line. Run through it. Mm -hmm. that, that way you know you finished your race and you finished it oh. strong. That's what faithfulness is. It means what? Keep believing in Jesus to the end and obeying him to the end. Yes, sir. And heaven's going to be a home, your home. That's what a disciple really is. It's one who follows his teacher. And you follow him to the very end. Yes, Otherwise, you won't graduate. Amen. That's right, man. Just put it in terms in which you understand. I think that's enough for you here today. What we're going to do, we're going to call our song leader up to lead us in a song of invitation. That's your song. That's for you to come down and out. Give me your hand, God, your heart. I'm going to do it very simply ask you like Philip that evangelist did in Acts chapter number 9 to that Ethiopian man. I'm going to ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You must respond just like that man did. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And go down in the water just like he did. Me and you will both go down like Philip and that Ethiopian eunuch did. We'll baptize you for the forgiveness of your sin and salvation of your soul here today. Don't let this moment pass by you. You may not get it ever again. Amen, y'all. And you got to do that while the blood is still warm in your veins.
Won't you come as together we stand and sing the Lord's invitation? Won't you come as we sing? Why do you wait, dear brother? so much, Father, for this opportunity that our brother has stood boldly, Father, before you name the gospel of Christ. Amen. Oh, Father, as we said in those that are listening to us, Father, whichever way, Father, that he had preached the gospel, and we pray, Father, that, that you will receive it and obey it before an everlasting yes, sake. Yes. And Father, we thank him Thank you so much for him and Father giving him the courage to stand to preach those things. Amen. And Father, as our hearts and our minds and heard the word this morning and those Father in Facebook and other ways that heard the gospel, we pray, Father, that they will not let it pass before them. But Father, come to Jesus while you have the life in you. Amen. And Father, we pray for that. So we pray for those, Father, that, 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 that are not here. But some way, Father, we pray that they would just see that we need to come together. Mm -hmm. Just hearing it, Father, and not doing it is not going to help us. Mm -hmm. so, Father, we pray that you just give us the courage and the strength to come forth before it's everlasting too late. Mm -hmm. Father, there are some that are nurse at home. Father, we Mr. Brother Bob, talking about his brother this morning. We pray for him. We pray for the sick. But Father, when we get to that stage and there's nothing that can do, if we can just go there and look, all it can do is just lay there and hope that there's someone that come by yes. and help them, Father. But you know, Jesus, we know you give us the strength while we have the strength to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Amen. We pray, Father, the word went out this morning and we prick the soul just like it did in you. And Father, Philip ran to him. And Father, yes, we will yes. come to you before it's everlasting too late to proclaim the gospel to you. We pray this morning, Father, that you will go with us, forgive us of all sin, be with the sick and suffering. We pray for the church as a whole. For all of those, Father, that is mentioned here this morning that are sick and struggling, Father, we pray that if you can just struggle to get to the church, it would help you. Yes, yes. But just staying at home, and, 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 and you're not going to be able to have fellowship with your brother and your sister. Amen. You need to be here some kind of way. And Father, Amen, you see strength. We help all of us, Father. That we could just fill this building back up, put the mask on, Father, we pray yes. that we will do those things. Yes. And help all of us, Father, as we go forth from here this morning mm -hmm. to share this gospel with those that are lost in this world. Mm -hmm. And Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Father, give us the courage and the strength to continue to preach your word mm -hmm. and to help Brother Lawwood. And Father, we pray for the elders here that are doing a fine job, continue to give them the strength and the yes. courage to stand before us and proclaim your word. Mm -hmm. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the Lord say, Amen. Amen.
Come on. Come down to this part of the service that's known as a collection. If there's anyone who needs to give an offering at this time, please raise your hand so one of our brothers can assist you in that fashion. You know, we we'll give a scriptural reference of how to give. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Where it reads, But this I say, he that sold bountifully shall reap bountifully. He that sold sparingly shall also reap sparingly. But let him want to give as he has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. But remember that you can give via the cash app as well. Um, the cash app handle is a dollar sign followed by Henry Street, excuse me, Henry ST COC. But let us give thanks for the collection. God, we come to you at this time and say thank you so much for our finances and our financial blessings that you have uh, bestowed upon all of us. We pray that you will allow us to continue to be good stewards of our funds. Lord, we just pray that we'll always. Uh, give back a portion of our earnings to you. Lord, we ask that you will bless the collection that's been gathered on this morning, that it will be used for uh, the, in the wisest way possible to spread the gospel here in the broad. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What can wash away my sins Nothing but the blood of Jesus oh, what Once again, let's close our eyes and reflect upon the suffering of Christ. The fact that while Jesus was on the cross, uh, as he was getting nails put into his hands and his feet, um, and after he had been there suffering for quite some time, uh, the soldiers came by and they pierced him in the side from which blood came forth. And Jesus knew that he had to endure this. Uh, 
brother. He did all this for all of us and also for some of the same people that were beating him to death. Um, but we know that it's through his blood that we have redemption, that we have the opportunity to uh, actually uh, receive forgiveness of our sins and the hope that we can be in the heavens with him in the end. Um, but let us pray and give thanks for this truth of the Bible. Lord, we thank you so much for um, for this juice that represents your, your son of blood. And we pray that as we partake of this cup, that we will do so uh, reflecting on the sacrifice that you made for us, uh, for our wrongdoing, so that we may be made right. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Did you really know my home? I'm just a passing through. 